What's up, everybody? It's me. You can find me at collateralbase.com or at cannabisindustrylawyer.com. My name's Tom, and we're going to be doing a deep dive into something that Illinois just came out with when they literally came out with it several days before Christmas, mostly because they, that's how a lot of cannabis companies and regulators do. They'll just give you the rules real, real quick. And that's what they did on the 21st of December in Illinois. We're going to do a deep dive on this and how you can win a cannabis license in Illinois for 2023. Miggy's joining me and so is Cole Preston from Chillinois. So let's bring them on and talk about this new round of Illinois dispensary lottery that's coming for February of 2023. If you want to get one of these, smash some likes, subscribe to this channel, and then get at me at Tom at CollateralBase.com. Miggy, what's up? Cole, what's happening? How's it going? Oh, it's pretty good. Did you see this? Did you see this? They, when did they do this? December 21st. Nobody's paying attention to anything on December 21st because it's days before Christmas. They issue a press release and they say, here is another round of 55 additional conditional cannabis dispensary licenses. Same types of BLS regions that they did last time, 17 BLS regions in Illinois, by the way, and a $250 fee to get in. They will, it's only going to be open for two weeks. What? I thought you guys were on pause though. Like, how's this even a thing? Lawsuits are gone. The lawsuits for the dispensaries are gone. We're going to be talking about a social equity fix as well that only applies to the dispensaries for this particular round and not. This, the rules haven't been changed for the craft growers. And so those craft grower rules may still have certain litigation issues that are currently getting litigated in Cook County regarding the constitutionality of the in-state residency and then also the veteran points. But that's a county thing though, right? Not the statewide, like games open. Is that what's about to happen for you guys? You're about to uh, have a fair, fair market or something? Uh, no, they're only another 55, only another 55 dispensaries. And then you have to be eligible to play the lottery. Miggy, you might be eligible to play a lottery. And if you are, I will pay you the $250. And then if you win, you just pay me $500. And sure, then we'll call it easy. But it's one of these deals that we're going to go over the rules of them because of all these lawsuits, they had to get settled and they changed certain aspects of it. So let's bring up this and you can see these previous announcements and then and they built on it. They've changed the regulations of the definition of what it means to be social equity. So they have the social equity criteria guide here now. It's a fairly complex lottery. Anyway, there are these eligible ones, and this is just their flow chart, not the one that I want. Eligible criteria guide, individual officers form an entity following the social equity criteria found here. Wow. And so this is the new sweetness on what it means to be social equity in Illinois. It has to be 51% owned and controlled by more than one individuals who each meet the combination or at least one, and they have to be 51% owned by such and such. And then criteria A, criteria B. So the DECO has this map, which is now worthless. And then here's the other one. Individual resided in the home address for five of the past 10 years. An individual qualifies under one of criteria B's requirements, criteria A and criteria oh, B. Wow. It just goes through. Here's how it works. Like telling someone that, hey, to have an opportunity, you have to have been broke for last year and then somehow become like in business with someone who's going to invest in you, right? Because you're already Correct. been broke. So, you know, how are you going to come across a half million dollars? In uh, no, no, no. A dispensary costs more than that to open in Illinois. A dispensary mm. probably costs about 1.5 million to open in Illinois. That's so true. how are you going to get that? You have social equity. Are you guys going to be issued? Is the state going to be issuing those loans? Because isn't that part of your guys' program? They are for only the growers, really. And then the loans that they'll issue you for the retail locations won't cover it because the amount of regulations to get compliant with what the state wants you to do to be a dispensary pushes that cost up. But isn't that part of, part of your guys' issues too, part of, for your uh, your market is this is just dispensaries, right? We're not act, adding grows. You're not adding real competition for so the actual that's... product. And that's the whole thing, Tom, you've been, a, you've been like way ahead of this. I was watching some of your videos from back in the day before I even really understood what was about to happen. You were like calling this before I think this all even happened. Their definition of equity is not equal opportunity, which no. is commonly no. what we think of as equity. Their definition of equity is the ability to get 
filthy rich off of cannabis. And I don't mean to say filthy rich. I don't mean to characterize the type of rich. Um, <laughs> but uh, it, it literally, it, the purpose of these limitations are so that they can raise the value of their product. And as you- And the license them, itself. The like license that. itself. Yeah. It's like the lottery ticket. The license itself is this, uh, okay, like Tom, you said, you'll pay my 250, I'll pay you 500, but then I'll flip it for a million if I could. Five million? That's what they're trying. If you're in a Chicago Damn. dispensary, they're trying to unload them for 5 million. If you're in a border town with like Iowa or Indiana, they're trying to unload them for three to four. If you're, try if you're downstate, like where I'm at, maybe two to three, but that's what yeah. they're trying to unload them for. And you can't, you can't sell these until they're operational. So you're seeing these structured deals go to, and I'm helping with structured deals. If you guys need somebody to help you with a structured deal, come on over to cannabisindustrylawyer.com. You'll find me. And then we'll talk about how you can do these. But do they, it, it's a, interesting. do they have a time frame though on ownership to flip it to make that lottery ticket happen? You know, what I'm no, saying? they just force it through their hands and it's their right. And then that means that they get money. But now what they've done is they've gamified legalization to randomly create millionaires where let's talk about it. These are the new rules. This is the mock application acknowledgements. So you can be in one of these five buckets here, right? Bucket number one, individual resided in five of the past 10 years in a census tract, AKA this could be anywhere in the United States that has 20% poverty, according to the American Community Survey available. And that's that census data that's in there anywhere in the United States. If you wanna play the Illinois Cannabis License Lottery and you live there and you can prove it, give me a- Here's the next one. Now this is SNAP assistance. So 20% of households get the food stamps essentially. Damn. Five out of the past 10 years. And then here's another one. Five out of the past 10 years, census tract identified as low income and low access or 100 households, one half mile from the nearest supermarket. Food deserts. Holy Food shit. Food deserts. Okay. Who receives Medicaid, DI, supplemental social security income, yeah. or supplemental social security disability income, or lived in subsidized housing for five out of the past 10 years. What the fuck does that have to do with cannabis? Mm. And anyway. we're still just in criteria A, right? Correct. <laughs> but this is, that person is eligible because they're certified, legitimate. You can only get on Medicaid if you're poor and have no assets. Yeah. You can't own this license unless you have no assets, which makes no <clears throat> effing sense to me. But whatever, it gets better. Okay. Yeah. An individual resided in a census tract with a top 15th percentile of the residents in the census tract failed to graduate from high school. Jesus Christ. Right. You know what this seems? It seems like a, a money grab for poor people's money. It's it's an all, they're right. buying votes, but two hundred fifty dollars fucking a chance to win right. that's what from people who are poor. The people who already are buying lottery tickets to scratch. Yes, that's it. I do want to say though that, and Tom, you correct me if I'm wrong. I think the two hundred fifty dollars fine is an improvement over what was a twenty five hundred dollars fine. But oh, really? but yeah, you guys are all right about all the other points you made. It's just it's strange. But now it gets into what is actual social equity. And this is where I think maybe you qualify. An individual who's been arrested for convicted or substantially similar offense in Illinois or the federal or state law for possession of not more than five hundred grams. Weren't you arrested for less than five hundred grams? Oh yeah. Yeah twice. All right. Twice, <laughs> Miggy? I will pay for your fucking lottery ticket because right there, you're way more qualified to own one of these businesses. I still and have granted, my... you have an arrest, and but that I don't understand. If you're on Medicaid, why does that make you eligible to own a cannabis license? Again, I think that whole first section, because how you guys talked about the social equity doesn't mean equity. It just means freaking some sort of like poor people magnet. It's, it's not a chance of having a chance. It's I'll get this lottery. How many people are going to? Even if, since they're given the option of out of state, they're asking for out of state dollars to come in too, right? Like they're asking, right. everybody has a chance. No you matter do. how broke you are, if you got $250 and no Maybe we are dollars, getting you a dispensary in the Chicagoland BLS and we are going to sell it for four to $5 million. I'm in. I'm in. Cool. All day, every day. We're doing this. Yeah. Anybody hey, else can, who qualifies? Wanna, yeah. Oh, I could qualify. Hold on. Okay. I could probably, I could maybe make myself qualify under provision three of criteria B. I could oh. make myself qualify. I, oh, I that wait, I don't know if they have time horizons because they might say they did that last time. The time horizon wow. for the arrest was the time that it became effective. And so middle of uh, 2019. So I just I'm curious. That was my lame way of wanting to ask both of you what you think about provision three on criteria B, which is that you had to have been a victim of a firearm in injury. Are you um, serious? That's what that it's Wow. It's brand spanking. This is this is bleeding edge social equity 
this doesn't exist at other places for social equity. This is Illinois special social equity. An individual has been a victim of firearm injury as those terms are defined in the rules. This must be evidenced by a police report or medical record. That's there you go. Stupid, though, man. Yeah. So I was a joke I was making is I could like shoot myself in the leg. Okay. And get a medical well, report hang on. Shoot. But then, <laughs> okay. Oh, Jesus Christ. So I guess then you can, if you really were just a terrible person, you could go down to the south side of Chicago or to Highland Park, Illinois, and be like, hey, did you get shot by that one schmo? Hey, guess who's qualified to be a dispensary owner? Would you like to spend 250 bucks by, and are you kidding? So we're turning gun violence into social equity now? That's um, crazy, dude. I know a guy who shot himself in the Navy. <laughs> I think he, of... he qualified. See if he wants to own a dispensary in Illinois. Yeah. No, it's so weird, though. This guy shot himself because he was trying to get out of Iraq. It doesn't say. Could just Is that in a police report? I, no, it's actually in his military record. It kind of be the same okay. thing. Well, I feel like, Tom, you're the lawyer here. I feel like that would qualify because it right? also says medical report. So. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, I'm going to just take up a collection and then be like, but you have to buy your own lottery ticket. And then my incubator program is I'll go start building the dispensary. You guys win the license and then call me. Yeah. It's such an odd. Because I can't play the lottery. Like I, if I try to win this license, it gets into this other aspect of it, which is hilarious. And so let's talk about the most equitable and accessible cannabis industry in the country, according to political reports. Now, between Illinois and New York, they are in a pissing contest to see which one gets it. So I think it's here where they do the new definitions. Here are the rules. It links back out to them. Yes, this is them. This is where they had to try to moot the dormant commerce clause litigation that is still pervasive all over the industry and say, hey, newsflash, if you are watching this from New York, you're getting the future of what you have. This is how you get around dormant commerce clause changes. You do what Illinois has done and made it all based on federal law. And that's why Miggy can kind of qualify and anybody who lives in 20% poverty or 20% food stamps for five out of the past 10 years and prove that anywhere in the United States, 250 bucks, roll the dice, man. I've been shot. And, uh, but here it is, victim, firearm injury. They define these freaking terms. The victim must not be the offender in the criminal act and must not have provoked or incited the crime. So if you shot yourself, I think you're out. But hey, if you're in a school shooting, you're in. Yeah, whatever. America. So if you are an entrepreneur in Illinois or New York and you want to get into the cannabis industry, move. Yeah. Leave. Go to Missouri. Go to Mexico. Go to Oklahoma. Go to Michigan where you can buy a license. But it's or you be very special. And then you can qualify. And then those special people don't have money. And so then they need us rich. And so that's the only two options. Hey. Miggy, do you want a St. Louis dispensary or Chicago dispensary? Because we're putting a ping pong ball in for you, man. Hey, man, I'm all about it. Where, wherever it lands, I will, I will fucking play. Chicago. You're going to like Chicago. But then it's like, hey, if you have to have these qualifications, four required, of which only may be combined a nation of four or a single criteria of four of these, which again, none of these match the stuff that Pritzker just put out and said, here's how we're going to do it, which yeah. just boggles my mind as a lawyer. I'm like, wait. Here's the rules that you said that are published in the register. Here it is, the 2022 Illinois register. Here's the update to the rules. Here's your link where you say that here's the update to the rules. And then the procedure that they give in December doesn't fucking follow it. And you're like, wait, it played the lottery, but there might be more lawsuits. And so you need four of these. The application is 26% owned by social equity. The applicant will operate in a, just during the first two years, they will purchase 25% of all their weed from a social equity applicant. During the first two years, they will use 30% of all their contracts with minorities, women, and people with disabilities defined in the Business Enterprise and Disabilities Act. And for a minimum of two years, they will give $250,000 to, to kids. Within 60 days, they will give $250,000 as an unrestricted grant. Within 60 days, they will also pay $500,000 to the Cannabis Business Development Fund. So this is the window for the uneligible people. Wow. So you either have to be option one, only one required. That's the DIA or the person who was arrested for the cannabis for the cannabis or option B, where you pretty much have to pay a million bucks. But then you see these regulations and then you see what the mock application qualifies for and they don't they aren't the same. And then there's no opportunity for an average person to even play the lottery, even with all these onerous penalties of hundreds of thousands of dollars and give away 26% of your business anyway, that you'd have to do. Most accessible and equitable cannabis industry in the world. It's a prime example of just, when did you guys legalize it? When did recreational become a thing? 
one year after Oklahoma went medical. Who was that? Twenty? It's been five years. years ago today. So yeah, it'll be four years in May. Four years. Wow. So twenty nineteen, May twenty nineteen. I, I just it's funny because when Washington State legalized it, it was only a year in, yeah. from the point to the market, and there was no lawsuits, I, I believe. But I also think too, people were scared and didn't know what to expect. They were just like, hey, "Let's just see what happens." I don't want to mm-hmm. jump into that. A lot of people were scared of investing. We have recent stories here about darkies being involved and the money behind different big mm-hmm. businesses. You guys yeah. are screwed. <laughs> Still, we are, but if you want to play the cannabis license lottery in Illinois, don't forget to head on over to cannabisindustrylawyer.com or go ahead and email me at tom at collateralbase.com. Let's do this. We only got a couple of weeks to get them in, and there might be lawsuits filed, but it's Illinois cannabis. It's only open to the exclusive special people just like you. Thanks for tuning in. Cole, thank you so much for stopping by. Miggy as well. Don't forget to tune in. We're going to have a new episode of 420 Somewhere with Cole. We're going to catch up on what Charlie Noy is doing and all sorts of stuff. So tune into that in a couple of days. And See you next time, everybody. Or you got Tom, something? Yeah. I just wanted to add to Miggy's point. He was talking about these people coming out and if there were connections. Many people have reported, including the Chicago Tribune, you can look this up. There are wealthy and connected owners to many of these new license owners, but one of them, let's just get specific from recent reporting, is the Green Rose, who's in, uh, got ties. The first Phil social Stefani. equity open. The first right. social equity dispensary open. Connections to Phil Rose. Stefani, restauranteur and former CTA executive John Trotter. There was also a consultant on the project, Ross Morale, who's a co-founder of Downstate Ataraxia, who you may know as Verano. Verano. Also. Jay Stewart, former head of the Illinois Department, the IDFPR, the people that you were just reading those right. memos from, Damn. has connections to this organization. Yeah, man. I just have to say really quick, close, the big issue here is that all of this is shrouded in secrecy, and it has been from the very beginning. Don Craven from the General Counsel for the Illinois Press Association argued that license applications should be public, just as information is made public in other heavy regulate, heavily regulated industries such as gambling. Oh, yeah. The Freedom of Information Act already has exemptions for trade secret, trade mm-hmm. secrets and security, which is the objections that cannabis companies give when we ask, who are you connected to? Yep. Who's behind all this? And they say, well, our good people and our customers. We right. put our customers first. So, it, 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 people. But money shouldn't be like transparency should be good, right? Like for when it comes to we're not asking you your fucking secret sauce to uh, the dirt or whatever. Oh, I know, guys. Okay. But let's get into it with Cole on 420 somewhere and wrap up this deep dive into what happened in Illinois. Cannabis dispensary license in 2023. If you want one, check it out. Don't forget to visit us at CannabisIndustryLawyer.com. You don't have very long. It'll be closed by Valentine's Day. See you next time.